This is ELC 131, Circuit Analysis 1, and in this presentation we're going to look at parallel RL circuits. Now, let's review. Impedance, symbolized with the letter Z, measured in ohms, and the unit symbol is the Greek letter omega. And impedance is the opposition to alternating current. Impedance is a combination of both resistance and reactance. Reactance is the frequency dependent opposition to a sinusoidal AC provided by an inductor X sub L or a capacitor X sub C. And mathematically X sub L equals 2 pi FL and X sub C equals 1 over 2 pi FC. Now, figure one shows us a parallel RL circuit. The circuit has a source voltage of 14.14 volts peak at a frequency of one kilohertz, and the source is connected to the parallel combination of L1, 100 millihenries, and R1, 620 ohms. Now, you recall that in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same for all components. V source equals VL1, which equals VR1. And this is both in magnitude and in time. So in this parallel circuit, we're going to use voltage as our reference. And this is shown in figure two. The sinusoidal waveform for V source starts at zero degrees. It is our reference element. Now, there's no difference in time from when voltage is applied to and current flows through a purely resistive element. So in figure three, we see that V source and IR are in phase, which means they happen at the same time. But from our previous discussion on inductors, we know that voltage leads current by 90 degrees in an inductor. Therefore, IL happens 90 degrees after voltage and the resistive current as illustrated or shown in figure four. So in this circuit, we have a situation where the two branch currents, IL and IR, do not happen at the same time. Now, it's difficult to illustrate these phase differences or the phase relationship between IR and IL sketching the sine waves as we saw in figure four. So we use vector diagrams to show this phase relationship. So referring to the vector diagram of figure five, we see that IR along with VS are used as the uh, reference point for this vector diagram. They're at the zero degree uh, point of this vector diagram. And of course, IL is placed at negative 90 degrees on the vector diagram because IL happens 90 degrees after IR and VS. Now in the parallel circuit of figure one, we know that as Kirchhoff's current law states, I source equals IR plus IL. But again, IR and IL do not happen at the same time. Referring to the vector diagram, IR and IL are 90 degrees apart, and I source is the vector sum of these two currents. So we must calculate I source by adding IR and IL as right angle values using Pythagorean's theorem. I source equals the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. And we're concerned about the angular difference between 
the resistive current and source voltage and the source current. And this angular uh, difference is symbolized with the Greek letter theta. We can calculate the angular difference, the phase angle of the circuit, by finding the inverse tangent of negative IL over IR. Now, in this equation, it's important that you express IL as a negative quantity, so you will return a negative value for theta when performing this calculation. Now, the impedance of a parallel RL circuit can be calculated using Ohm's law. Impedance, again, the opposition to alternating current can be found by taking V source divided by I source. Now, just like with a resistive circuit, we can calculate the total opposition to current using the product over sum equation. However, we cannot add R and X sub L directly. They must be added as right angle quantities. So impedance equals R times X sub L divided by the square root of R squared plus X sub L squared. And just like with resistive circuits, we can calculate the total opposition to current using the reciprocal formula. But again, we cannot add um, 1 over R and 1 over X sub L directly, we must add them as right angle values. So the impedance of the circuit can be determined by finding 1 over the square root of 1 over R squared plus 1 over X sub L squared. And we can also find the total impedance of this parallel RL circuit by using admittance, where Z equals 1 over Y at some angular value. And we look at admittance in the next slide. So we, we look here at two new terms, susceptance and admittance. Now, the reciprocal of reactance is susceptance, symbolized with the letter B, which is measured in Siemens. The unit symbol is the capital letter S. B sub L, the susceptance of an inductor, is 1 over X sub L. And of course, you recall that the reciprocal of resistance is conductance, symbolized with the letter G, also measured in Siemens. And the reciprocal of admittance, symbolized with the letter Y, is also measured in Siemens. So admittance is 1 over Z. Now, the rules of polar math tells us that, or tell us that 1 over X sub L would yield B sub L at negative 90 degrees. Figure 7 shows us the RL impedance vector diagram, and X sub L is at positive 90 degrees, so B sub L would have to be at negative 90 degrees, as shown in figure 8. And of course, looking at figure 7, we see that resistance is at 0 degrees. 1 over some value of resistance at 0 degrees gives us a value of conductance also at zero degrees. And we see this in the vector diagram of figure eight. So if we uh, add G and B sub L, again, we must add these as right angle values. Y equals the square root of G squared plus B sub L squared and Y will have some phase angle, which can be calculated by taking the inverse tangent of negative B sub L over G. And again, impedance equals one over Y. Now we look at the power in a parallel RL circuit. And the resistive power dissipation is true power, 
we symbolize this with P sub R for resistive power. And resistive power or true power is measured in watts symbolized with the capital letter W. Reactive power is symbolized with P sub X and reactive power is measured in volts, amps, reactive or VARs. And the combination of true power and reactive power is apparent power measured in volt amps, VAs. And we can calculate the power uh, in the circuit elements of this parallel RL circuit. Again, PR can be calculated using V times I, I squared times R, or VR squared divided by R. The reactive power can be calculated by finding VL times I, I squared times X sub L, or VL squared divided by X sub L. And the apparent power, V source times I, or I squared times Z, or V source squared divided by Z. Or we can find the apparent power by finding the uh, vector sum of PR squared plus PX squared. And the parallel RL uh, power vector diagram is provided for us in figure nine. Now again, when looking at power in this circuit, I use the symbology that is used in the painter text. And again, some texts will use PT for true power and um, PR for reactive power. Now, just like with the series RL circuit, we're concerned about power factor. Power factor is the ratio of true power to apparent power. Power factor can be calculated by taking the true power divided by the apparent power or simply finding the cosine of the phase angle of the circuit where again the cosine is the opposite side of a right triangle over the hypotenuse, which is the true power over the apparent power. Power factor has no units. It's always expressed as a decimal value. The power factor can never be greater than one. And power factor is a major concern for industrial facilities that have large inductive loads like motors. The apparent power is delivered by the utility and the true power, PR, is the real work being done. And most industrial and manufacturing facilities have to use power factor meters to monitor the power factor and they're required by the utility provider to keep their power factor at 0.8 or above. So let's look at the analysis of a parallel RL circuit. So the first step is to find the value of inductive reactants, X sub L equals two pi FL. For the circuit of figure one, this is 628 ohms. So the inductive current is V source divided by X sub L. 10 volts divided by 628 ohms gives us 15.9 milliamps. And the resistive current Vs over R gives us 16.1 milliamps. And again, for this circuit, I have converted the 14.14 volts peak to an RMS value of 10 volts. So we find the source current, the total current in this circuit, by finding the vector sum of IR and IL, where I source equals the square root of IR squared plus IL squared, which is 22.6 milliamps. And then I find the phase angle of the circuit by taking the inverse tangent of negative IL over IR 
which gives us a phase angle of negative 44.6 degrees. Again, when uh, making this calculation, you need to or you have to put a negative sign uh, or associate or have a negative sign associated with the inductive current so that we will return a negative value for theta. And the current vector diagram for the circuit of figure one is shown in figure 10. Now we look at calculating impedance in this circuit. And impedance, again, can be calculated by taking V source divided by I source. 10 volts divided by 22.6 milliamps gives us 442 ohms. Or we can use the product over sum, R times X of L, divided by the square root of R squared plus X of L, X sub L squared, which gives us 441 ohms. Notice there's a slight difference because of the rounding error of 22.6 milliamps. Now we can also find the impedance of the circuit using the reciprocal formula, 1 over the square root of 1 over r squared plus 1 over x sub l squared, which gives us 441 ohms. Or we can find the reciprocal of admittance. The admittance of the circuit was 2.26 millisiemens at negative 44.6 degrees which gives us 442 ohms at 44.6 degrees. Again, the difference is due to the rounding error of the 2.26 millisiemens. Now we look at calculating the admittance of this circuit. And again, B sub L is 1 over X sub L. 1.59 millisiemens. Conductance is 1 over R, 1.16 millisiemens. Admittance is the square root of G squared plus B sub L squared, which gives us 200, excuse me, 2.26 millisiemens. And the phase angle of admittance is the inverse tangent of negative B sub L over G which is negative 44.6 degrees. The admittance vector diagram is shown in figure 11. Now, the power uh, calculations for the circuit of figure 1 are shown. PR can be calculated by taking V source times IR, which gives us 161 milliwatts. The inductive or reactive power, V source times I sub L, gives us 159 millivolts amps reactive. And the apparent power can be calculated either by taking V source times I or finding the vector sum of PR and PX, which give us 226 millivas or 225 millivas. Again, the difference is due to the rounding errors of the um, total current, 226 milliamps. And the power vector diagram is provided in figure 12. The power factor of the circuit is uh, can be determined by taking the cosine of theta the cosine of negative 44.6 degrees is 0.712. And again, this is a lagging power factor because the source current lags the source voltage. We find that any time we have a, re, a an inductive circuit, it will always be a lagging power factor. 